Welcome back to Who Chose. And have I got some updates for you. As well as hydroponic macadamias. <laughs> and like I said in my last video. So to begin with, let's start with what is fast becoming my favorite set and forget hydroponic system. The rain gutter grow system. This system has been going gangbusters. Keep in mind that I don't touch this system at all. It basically takes care of itself. It gravity feeds down from the reservoir, which is full of nutrient. And that's the same nutrient feeding leafy greens as it is feeding fruit trees and pumpkins. So before we get into the problems I've been having with the pumpkins, let's have a look at the eggplant and the fruit trees that are now starting to put out new fresh shoots, which is really exciting. I'm so keen to have some fresh citrus in my future and maybe some whiskey sours, but the pumpkins are also producing and they better be because they've been giving me some issues. So to start with, the pumpkins started leaning on my float switches. Now that drained my reservoir the first time before I installed these. Now, these are just 100 mil pipes cut in half and they fit directly over the top of the float switches on the system. And this will stop the pumpkins or any plants or anything from leaning on the float switches. They also double as protection from the sun so you don't end up with algal buildup like I have before. And here is the problem I've been having with the pumpkin roots. They get into everything. Like they will just follow the channel along and clog up the section where you've got your float valve. Uh, this actually stops the nutrient from topping up and causes the whole rail to dry out. So to deal with this, I've just left one part free. I'm actually gonna create a slit where I can cut the roots every now and then whilst maintaining the system. Um, and I'm also moving all of the pumpkins into the same rail. So I only have to monitor one rail. Now, moving them was pretty stressful. I mean, I did have to rip a lot of roots, um, but they seem to have all recovered just fine. The problem I was worried about facing is that the pumpkins, when they're in the system with other plants, they move across and then up into the pots through the nets. And this is a problem because you don't want those roots clogging the net cups that aren't the pumpkins because it will stop wicking up to the plants in the pots and those plants will die. As long as you don't have anything else in that channel uh, and keep those float switches clear, they don't cause any more trouble. Uh, they may choke out the container they're in, but the roots are going down into the nutrient and sucking it up anyway. So it doesn't really matter if the cocoa and perlite have served their purpose and don't wick anymore. My main piece of advice for this system is do not put pumpkins in, in the same rail, uh, in the same system that you have other plants because they will make their way up into the containers through the net cups and they'll actually take over the cocoa perlite and choke out that wicking which will leave the plants in your other containers deficient of nutrients because there's no wicking happening because all the roots of the pumpkin they just choke out those net cups so here they are the hydroponic macadamias now Similar to the way I set up the other fruiting trees in the system, all I did was I removed the sleeve on the outside of these plants. Now these are actual horticultural macadamias um, that was supplied to a friend of mine for his macadamia farm. All I've done here is add those macadamias into cocoa perlite, put them in larger pots, and I've added in here this is our moisture sensing gravity fed irrigation system or the blue mat sensors. From here, I've just got a hose that feeds up into the blue mat sensors and it gravity feeds from 
My reservoir for these systems is now the 1000 liter IBC tote that I had over next to the NFT, not the one running the NFT, the one next to it. And it now gravity feeds all these systems, allowing me to go a long time between reservoir changes. Now, this is fantastic. Obviously, nothing is utilizing the nutrient while it's in there. Um, so it pretty much stays unchanged uh, until it reaches the systems. Now, ideally, I'd have a pump in here um, stirring the nutrient continuously, but I found that it actually just stays in solution just fine, and it should. That's what it's designed to do. And as you can see at the moment, it's about 70% full, which is uh, about 700 litres of nutrient, uh, which equates to about 1.4 kilograms. And this is the Campbell's Special T High Potassium Nutrient. And here it is, the corner of failure. <laughs> so with the blue mat sensors, that was my fault. I actually let them run dry. And then when I refilled the reservoir, because they'd run dry, uh, they were reset kind of. So they actually drained the whole reservoir again. And because I really couldn't be bothered setting this system up over again, I kind of just saved the plants I wanted to save and left the rest. So I'm going to use these sensors, but I'm going to use them in my modular self-watering system. These tomatoes are getting absolutely demolished by king parrots. And I'm just so sick of coming out here and seeing king parrots eating all my hard work. So I've left that system. It was really just a test to see if I could just water nutrients straight into cocoa. Good news, you can. You just need to stay a little bit more on top of it than I have, as you can see. <laughs> this is the modular auto watering system. And as you can see, I've expanded the system. I've got these devices on most every fruiting tree that I have around the property and I'll continue to install them on new trees, especially new trees, to get them through that initial growth and shock and keep that water to those roots. And these are the beans that I installed the modular self-watering irrigation devices on. And they've gone from strength to strength purely because they've had the exact right amount of water throughout their life for their whole life. So an added bonus to these systems is they kind of give you some idea of the moisture retention within the soil. For instance, this device I've had to top up two times already. And the other ones I've only topped up once, if any, for most of them. So that tells me I probably need to add in some sort of mulch to keep the evaporation down or that the plant's drinking a lot more than the other plants. It could also be too adequately draining, and that might be something that I can amend. It's most likely a combination of those three factors. And these devices allow you to identify those problems. And don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the NFT. In fact, I'm winding her up. Let's get back into it. <laughs> so it's probably a bad time to film because um, the sun is so intense, it's making the leaves droop after a nice, cool night. However, these plants have actually gone from strength to strength after a botched attempt at trying to invent a way to uh, introduce plants into the system without using the puck propagator. Welcome back to Who Chose. Today on Who Chose, we're going to try and take these lettuce seedlings straight out of our cheap alternative hydroponic seed starting technique and put them directly into our pucks, skipping the propagator. Hopefully, I'll be able to untangle the roots enough so that I don't adversely affect the plants. I've probably left these lettuces in here a little bit too long as well, uh, but I've been really busy. 
Oh, it's separating all right. Sibling number one. <laughs> we need another bucket to wash them. <sighs> now, obviously, you want your seedlings to be a little younger than this, but that's okay. Perk up. <laughs> Look, I'm going to have to go with a non-success. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a beautiful mess, though. <laughs> uh, they're, just, they're just a little bit too far gone. The chickens will love it. <laughs> so these are more like the plants that we can transplant directly from our cheap and easy seed raising technique. So, all I have to do is pull them out by the cotyledon leaves. There's their root structure. Wash it off, grab myself a puck, pop it in, and it's a perfect little seedling. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and this is the result. Now, it's not a complete failure. I mean, some of the lettuces survived and the cucumbers are doing really well. Uh, they look droopy, obviously, because it's really hot at the moment, but uh, they just perk straight back up as soon as they're not getting absolutely obliterated by the sun. Now this is the cheap and easy flood and drain hydroponic system and it's doing fantastically. I'll have a time lapse for you not too far in the future for this system, but this is in stark contrast to the Dutch bucket hydroponic system. Now the Dutch bucket hydroponic system is suffering from the same ailments that my other two hydroponic systems, the moisture sensing and just the plain watered in cocoa are uh, suffering. It's basically just a bird perch and it's been producing fruit, but I've really just let it go because uh, even though it is producing, most of it's just getting stolen and I'm just going to cut these down and then leave the system. And once I have a plan in place, where I can protect these guys from pests, then I'll get this up and running and we can really make some progress. This is the one I've been super excited to show you guys. Have a go at the grass in that system. Now I've left it this long because I wanted the roots to take hold before I let the girls in to crop the tops so that they couldn't rip the whole shoot out and kill the grass seedling. Uh, but now I'm hoping that this has given the grass long enough to develop roots that have found their way down into that geofab and we can let the girls out for a run at the system. So let's do that. Well, I think we can call this system a success. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with it. And 
after all those failures, something had to work. <laughs> so thanks for watching today on Who Shows, and I'll see you next time. Happy hydroponicking. <laughs> I like that. <laughs>